I'm going to be talking about my experience both as a patient and uh, as a, a daughter of a woman who was an energy healer. My father was a lawyer, so I have like two totally different perspectives. And then I married a surgeon, and, uh, and then I got sick, which was, to be honest, it was kind of a bummer. It wasn't something I was expecting. Nobody does. Um, I'm going to be talking about what symptoms I had, uh, my initial diagnosis, uh, what I chose to do. I did alternatives, as Dr. Harrell said, and uh, I went down to Tijuana, Mexico for some of my treatment, which is pretty much outside the norm. And then uh, what I realized was the incredible amount of attitude and mental component that sort of pulled me through it. So uh, we all know who this is, right? Homer Simpson. You're probably uh, familiar with the idea of the devil on your shoulder and the angel on your shoulder. I'm going to be talking about that a lot. Um, and uh, I'm going to be talking about that a lot. Symptoms. Uh, I woke up in pain one morning. And it's easiest for me just to read from my book because these are my notes, so uh, you'll forgive me. Um, pain jerks me awake, awake and curious and confused. I gasp as a shooting pain from under my right breast courses through my body. A clenching, sharp pain that persists for a few seconds, relaxes, and then starts up again. I look down at my chest, orange in the reflected light from the city streets. From lying on my side, I shift to my back. The pain is still intense. I sit up. I pull the comforter up over my shoulders and wait for it to recede. After 20 minutes of pain, at midnight, I call George. My husband was working at the hospital. I was in Washington with my parents. Hello? His sleepy voice is low and gravelly. I'm in pain. My breath comes in gasps. His voice quickly shifts into terse, worried, professional. Where? Tucked under my ribs on the right side. It's really bad. I don't know what's going on. I start to cry. Sharp pain? Dull pain? Sure. Yeah, both. Whatever. You think you have a fever? Have you vomited? No, no. It really hurts. It comes in waves. What's going on? Well, right where you're saying where it hurts is your gallbladder. But if you had ruptured your gallbladder, you'd be vomiting or you'd have a fever. What does your gallbladder do? George continues in his doctor explaining voice. It holds bile that your liver makes until there's a lot of fat in your stomach. At that point, the gallbladder pumps the bile into your duodenum to aid in digestion. Sometimes the gallbladder can be filled with gallstones or stuck. What's your duodenum? The upper part of your small intestine. Did you eat a lot of fatty stuff today? You mean besides leftover steak for breakfast or creme brulee for dessert? I smile. I'm jealous. I've eaten hospital food all day. The pain punches me. What should I do? It isn't going away. Take some muscle relaxants, and they should help. And call me if it gets worse. Are you sure you don't think you have a fever? No, pain, just lots and lots of pain. Are you sure it's the gallbladder? I don't know, but that's what it sounds like. The gallbladder is located in that area under your right rib. OK, I'm going to take some medication. I'll call you later. Love you. Bye. Bye. The next morning, I'm explaining my nighttime peregrinations to my family. I'm sorry if I'm yawning today. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. All are silent, listening. I woke up with a weird pain under my right ribs. George thinks it's my gallbladder. So when I get home, I'll do a gallbladder cleanse. Dad looks at me, confused. Gallbladder cleanse? Yes, I read about them years ago. I never told you about the one I did last year? Blank faces answer the question. You drink apple juice for a few days to soften up your bile, and then the day of the cleanse, you drink Epsom salts with grapefruit juice, and you avoid eating fat. Sounds delicious. My sister, Emma, giggles. I laugh with her. Well, hold on. I haven't gotten out the fun part. After you drink all this salt, you drink a big glass of olive oil and lie on your left side. It's supposed to shock your gallbladder into opening the biliary ducts, because you haven't eaten fat all day, and pumping out the stones that you've softened by drinking the apple juice. Emma leans in, her expression captivated. What happens to the stones? Well, they end up floating on the toilet the next morning. Wow, that is so cool. What do they look like? Green, fluorescent green, black, sometimes a mix of the two. You can see pictures of them online. How big are they? Emma continues the size of a penny or bigger? Okay, okay, that's enough. Dad rumbles across the two of us. I'm still eating. So, pain. Uh, it doesn't get any better. I do a gallbladder cleanse, it goes away for a while. I do liver cleanses, I drink lots of black walnut extracts. I walk up and down natural health food to be like, how can I cleanse? You know, where is this pain coming from? It doesn't get any better. So I finally end up going to uh, general a gastroenterologist. You all familiar with that idea? It's a person who does, you know, GI stuff. I sit on the examining table during our appointment with the young GI doctor. Dr. John is tall and slight. His glasses cut his face in half, 
and are a smooth counterpoint to his acne craters. This man looks so young. Well, it seems to help when I do yoga, and I've been avoided cheese and wheat. I also learned the spot really hurts when I drink alcohol. Hmm, okay. I stare at him, daring him to contra contradict my next statement. Also, I did another gallbladder cleanse, and I passed large stones the next morning. Wearing a white coat over his surgical scrubs, George, my husband, shifts in his seat. Dr. John directs the next question to George. Hold on. Whoa. Don't look, don't look. <laughs> there we go. Dr. John directs the next question to George. You think they were really stones? <laughs> well, George glances at me. They floated. But whether I say for certain they were not fecal matter, I don't know. Hello, I must be chopped liver. Darn it, I should have brought them in. There was one I passed about the size of my thumbnail. Well, if that were true, we would have seen it on the ultrasound. Why would I lie about something that was bright green and yellow and floating on the top of my toilet after a gallbladder cleanse? You think you learned the whole world in medical school? So, um, <clears throat> how many people are talking in this scene? There's Dr. John, there's my husband, George, there's me, and then there's some funky voice in italics, right? You all remember the conversation about Homer and the devil and the angel on his shoulder? I'm just calling attention to that because what I tried to do in this book was recognize that not only was this an experience that was really sort of difficult to go through, but it gave me an opportunity to start listening to what was going on inside my head. And I wanted to have the people who were reading the book be able to have that same experience, so I put in that extra character. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. All right. So, I had uh, pain. I did the endoscopy. And you all know what it's like to be uh, young and having your being away from school and having your parents trawl in. After the endoscopy, they tell me it's going to take five weeks to get in, so my mother calls me. Five weeks? What do you mean the soonest you can get in to see someone and have this done is five weeks? That's completely unacceptable. I love talking on the phone with my mother when I'm at work. <laughs> Mom, I'm figuring out how to fix a depreciation schedule for evaluation model, and I've never done this before. My English major brain is rather stressed about it. Five weeks is exactly what I told you. That's how long it takes. Would it make any difference if we changed your health care? If we could pay for on your own to have this done? Surely there must be specialists somewhere. Mom, I don't want to deal with this. The procedure is scheduled, and that's all the energy I have to think about it. I'm able to take a Vicodin when it happens. It's not every night. This is something I can handle. My life is full enough as it is. I'm just going to throw out that a lot of people, um, especially I was young, I was in shape, I ate right, you know, you got pain that doesn't make any sense, all right, but it's not the end of the world, it's not cancer. Maybe it is cancer. <laughs> CT scan. All right. The pain gets worse, 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 worse. It's happening all the time, not just at night. I'm taking Vicodin every four hours. I can barely see. It's like bad scene. 